my daughter Cherry, she saw somebody with dwarfism who was powerlifting and she said to me, do you think you could do that, Daddy? What motivates me to uh, keep going during the tougher workouts is the fact that I really want to be able to make my daughter Cherry proud of me. My average workout involves a lot of pain, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears. <laughs> it involves a lot of hard work. Rich's workout ethic is un unreal. Like, I've never seen someone with so much determination to make it to Tokyo in 2020. Just one year ago, 47-year-old Rich had never lifted a single weight. But today, he's training to become part of the next British powerlifting Paralympic team. Right then, Cherry, should we have a protein shake? Can you set your stall up? I'm going to be the shake lady. What inspired me to start powerlifting was the fact that I was watching uh, the Paralympics with my daughter and she saw this lady with dwarfism and she recognised that she was like me. She says, Daddy, do you think you could do that? Well, at the time, I'd just come out of many major surgeries. To be honest, I'd got quite an addiction to opiate-based pain medications that I've been on for years. And I think it was the kick that I needed to actually do something with my life that was positive. I just quit all the medications that I was on while my doctor was on holiday, went cold turkey and took up powerlifting. Since starting his powerlifting training, his five-year-old daughter Cherry has been by his side every step of the way. My daddy powerlifting is good. I think my daddy can make it into the Paralympics. Having Cherry along with me on my competitions and training is, is immensely inspiring for me and motivational-wise as well because she gets to see Daddy getting stronger and it's something for her to be proud of when Daddy competes. I never doubted Rich's ability to powerlift when he first came to us. We adapted our training methods to suit his needs. When Rich first told me he was going to try powerlifting, I initially was concerned for the effects it could have on him physically. Obviously it's not without its risks to even, you know, the able-bodied individual, but obviously with Rich's health conditions being as they are, I was sort of concerned. The type of dwarfism that I have is a, a condition called uh, diastrophic dwarfism. My long bones are obviously affected and my arms are a lot shorter and my fingers obviously. I think it's quite a rare condition compared to most other dwarfisms. And I have complicated joints so that they don't actually move in the same way axes as other people's joints do. Growing up with dwarfism as a child, it was quite difficult in the sense that you attract a lot of attention from other children because you do stand out. Uh, you're always smaller than your peers. So I had to have an awful lot of surgeries. Uh, I think over 40 as a child, because uh, I was born with my legs turned inwards and my, I had what they call talipes or club feet. So every year during the summer holidays, I would go into hospital, have surgeries on both legs. And then, um, you know, all the kids are on holiday and stuff. I was sat there with two legs in plaster casts for the whole summer. So, uh, so that, was, that was tough. After enduring numerous surgeries as a child, Rich began struggling with arthritis. At age 35, his left knee collapsed. The first surgeon that I saw, he said that I would have to have my leg amputated. And if my other leg went the same way, I'd have to have that amputated too. Two years later, they found a doctor who could help, and Rich was given surgery to save his legs. I think what kept me going through my surgeries was the uh, support of my wife, uh, Charlie, uh, and the love that she has for me. Uh, she's always been there from the day one. We just met across the pool table, basically. Our teams were pitched against each other and just went from there, really, didn't it? I'm really, really proud of him. It came a bit unexpectedly, but the way he's sort of committed himself to it, it's quite inspiring to see how much effort and determination he's putting into you know, his training. Wow. Oh, it matches, yeah, she put that on. The examples I'm hoping to set for Cherry is that anything is possible. Maybe you don't think you can do, you can do if you give it a try. Six months into his training, and Rich has exceeded even his own expectations. The top hold that I've held is uh, 110 kilos. Uh, bearing in mind I weigh 51 kilos on a good day, <laughs> so that's like twice body weight, uh, at least. 
did I think I would make it this far? If you'd asked me six months ago, would I be holding 110 kilos above myself? The answer would definitely be no. I think the thing that I'm most proud of so far is after just five months of training, I went into the English weightlifting championships doing powerlifting on, on the bench. And uh, I came sixth in the country in England. So I know for a fact that now onwards, we can only get better and better. I think the way that Rich is going, he could definitely reach the Paralympics. I mean, if in six months he can go from never having bench pressed at all to lifting 100 kilos, I think that, you know, within the next three and a bit years, that, you know, he's got plenty of scope for massive improvements. I'm immensely proud of him for his achievements and his attitude and his determination. I think the motivation for me personally is doing something that makes not only myself proud and particularly my daughter and family proud but also hopefully maybe inspire other people who maybe think that they can't do something uh, and just to give something a go. Even if I don't make it to the Paralympics, the journey along the way will be a lot further than where I would have got if I'd not tried. <laughs>